Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to ITP Guide 3.0, Session 2. I'm Gahana Karnanandan, and I'm, I'm going to be your host for today. I'm really honored to welcome all of you in behalf of the MS Club of Slate. Work, and you'll get what you need. Work harder, and you'll get what you want. You guys are on your way to success by joining us this evening to enhance your knowledge and do better in your upcoming project. We all appreciate you being here. All right, without further ado, let's, let's get to the session. The first session for tonight is going to be back in with Springboard. The session will be conducted by Shehan Bartholomews, who is a third year software engineering undergraduate and an intern software engineer at Pearson Lanka, and Shivani Rajkumar, who is also a third year software engineering undergraduate and an intern software engineer at Pearson Lanka. Over to you guys. Okay, guys, welcome you all. So, this is the ITP 3.0. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, so today we are going to develop a to-do app uh, with you all, and uh, so we are going to use Spring Boot uh, uh, framework for the backend. We are going to use Java. So so what we are basically going to do is we are going to uh, create a to-do application, and uh, we are going to you, you guys know when we are working with the application, we got, we need a database, right? So we are going to use MongoDB as our database. And uh, so we are going to use MongoDB Atlas uh, this time. And uh, yes, Shivani? Yeah, so basically in this session, we are fo mainly focusing to create a to-do application because if you take your project, there will be two parts, right? Backend and front end. So the, uh, this session will be divided into three parts. The first part will be done by me and Shehan. Like we will be creating all the logical codes, the database related code with uh, Spring Boot and MongoDB. And the second part will be done by Muru and Upendra. They will be connecting our backend with, uh, with front end using Angular. So the third part will be uh, done by Nuduja. So he will be teach you all how to host your app. The CACD part will be there. So now in this part, we will move to Spring Boot and MongoDB. Before uh, creating a Spring Boot project, let's see how to create uh, the MongoDB, like uh, how we can create a database, how to create a cluster, how to create collection, those kind of things. So Shehan will share his screen and uh, show us how to move with MongoDB. Yes, Shivani. Uh, yes, I'll share my screen. So, so we are going to now set up our database database in uh, MongoDB. So, guys, um, you are familiar with SQL databases, right? You have used my MySQL, SQL Server. In your previous uh, applications, even your previous projects. So today, for a change, we are going to use NoSQL databases. So in our first session, also we did uh, a session regarding what is NoSQL database and uh, what are the differences between SQL databases and NoSQL databases. So I'm sh I hope you guys have an idea about it. So we are not hoping to going into deep in that. Uh, but anyway, we are going to we are going to show you the steps. How you can set up your MongoDB database uh, in MongoDB Atlas, and uh, so yeah. So without further ado, let's go. Right? Yeah. So, so Shehan, we are going with locally or cloud-based. How we are going to? Uh, move? Yeah, Shivani. We are. So you guys mm -hmm. have probably worked with how to uh, set up your database in near local machine, right? So you guys have uh, experience in that. But yeah. I think uh, most of you do not have an experience how to. Uh, set up your application in cloud, right? So we are going to do something like that today. We are going to uh, set up our uh, MongoDB in MongoDB, um, we are going to set up our database in MongoDB Atlas, so it is, which is a cloud-based uh, database. So so guys, so the first step is you have to go into this side, MongoDB, uh, yeah, you have to go, go into this side and then the, this is the MongoDB site and you have to create an account if you do not have an account uh, which is a pretty straightforward step I'm not going to do it you can do it but I'm going to sign in with my uh, account I'm going to login with Google oh yes um or did login in. so guys uh, this some this is the interface you will see for the first time this will be somewhat like this but um so guys uh, now we have logged into the uh, mongodb and uh, mongodb atlas and uh, the first thing you have to do is you have to create an organization you can easily create an organization by uh, 
going into here in your left of left uh, corner you can uh, uh, so you have you can uh, create an organization from here I actually cannot remember where you can create an organization but uh, if you are uh, creating your account for the first time then probably you, you will be asked to create an organization you can create an organization for the first time but I haven't created an organization right now I have created an organization called ITP 3.0 is I'm going to go inside right now so this will be the organization you will be, uh, this, this is what the organization would look like so inside your organization you can create projects right so right now i do not have any kind of project in here so you can uh, create a new project by clicking on the uh, on this button your project and you can uh, give a project name let's give uh, to do the web because i'm going to create a new web and next and then you can and guys uh, you are working with your team right so you have to add your members to this project uh, so also so you, your team members can work on your project too so you can add your team members email addresses in here and then uh, invite your uh, team members so what i'm going to do is um i'm just uh giving uh, email address you can uh, okay so this is how you so this is how you uh give your friends email addresses then then you can uh, give a role give a, give a permission to your member members you can give a permission by uh clicking on this and you have a bunch of options here right so you can give uh different options here you can give a project owner and you can read about the uh, mail permissions uh, here in the right side you can read those things that you can understand so let's just give project owner for now this is the permission i'm giving to this user then we can create a project of course you can uh, add many at like you have eight members right so you can add eight members so yes yeah, so we now uh, what we have done so far is we have uh, in and have created an organization and inside that organization we have created a project and uh, inside that project we are going to uh, build our database right so before that uh, uh, as you guys can see when i'm clicking on this button build a database before that we have to create a cluster okay so is the page uh, right now, basically what is a cluster is since we are going with a public cloud platform we need a database as a service offering right so we need to create a cluster uh, those clusters are responsible to manage our databases and collections that's why we are uh, not going to straightly create a database before that we are going to create a cluster yes shivani of course so 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 we are going to create a cluster so our databases are going to be on top of that cluster so that that is why we are creating cluster yes you are right correct, correct. so we have three options to create clusters so the these two i have i probably had to pay so i'm not going to choose it i'm going to uh, choose the free one the shared one and i'm going to create it so i'm right now i'm going to create a cluster and uh, uh, i have a bunch of settings here but i'm not going to change those things if you want you can uh, change the flight provider and uh, you can change the region the region mumbai is the near, nearest region for us in for us sri lankan so i'm gonna keep it and then you can a uh, bunch of options here as well we can give a name uh just change the name why well, you can give like um ms club uh ms club cluster yeah let's just give ms club uh, then we can create the cluster. I think this will take some time. Yeah, it will take three to five minutes. Uh, until then, I'll show you what is database access. In your left hand side, you can see this net, 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 database access tab, right? So you can go to that. And guys, uh, when you were working with uh, MySQL or SQL Server databases, you guys can remember that you have. Uh, somewhat of a login right you 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 logged into your database using a username and a password if you can remember right 
so what we are going to do here is something like that so in order to use our database we have to add users to that database right so we have to create a database user so we can create a new database uh, database user uh, by clicking on this button and uh, so guys we can uh, no, this is the authentication method right so uh, we have three options so the password one is uh, we can authenticate our database user by giving a password and username and uh, these two you can read about and understand so we are going to stick with this one for now uh so we can give a username to our user uh let's just keep this user one as it is and uh just give the password uh, yeah so yeah uh so you can uh, give a password like this uh just give one two three four one two three four oh this is our username and this is our password and uh we can give privileges to our user so so uh, database user privileges we can give privileges we can uh, give roles to our user so we have uh, three options. We have uh, built-in three roles, uh, cluster admin and uh, re only read any database of the uh, role. So we have roles like that. I'm going to give class admin, uh, class at least admin. Uh, admin will be able to do everything, I think. I think he even can uh, delete and create databases. Uh, so there are stuff like that. So if we, if I give uh, read only any database, then this user will, if, if you logged in with this credential, then this user won't be able to uh, create a database or anything. So probably I I'm choosing this one, so I'm gonna create databases and stuff like that. So you if you want, you can create custom roles as well, and there are specific privileges you can give. And uh, yes, so we can now add this user. You can add this by clicking on this button. So, yeah, Shihan, so we, now we are having an organization uh, inside a cluster. We are going to create so many, we can create many databases. So, by uh, like now we, ha we are having a user, right? So, uh, is this user can uh, do operations uh, with all the databases in, inside the cluster, the particular yes, cluster? Of course. Yeah, uh, so this, this user, we now this user is uh, not just for and database, just for a database. This user, I mean, we, we can use this user and create another database as well in our cluster. So, yeah, we can do that, uh, Shivani. Yeah. Um, so now let's check whether our cluster is ready. Or... Yeah. Uh, so, guys, uh, in your left hand side, it is database tab. If I go into that, and go to there. Uh, yes, it's still loading. If this the cluster is uh, now up and running, you can see a red dot. Uh, no. Uh, Green colored, yeah, green dot here, but uh, this updating. I think it's because I uh, the user is still being created or something. Oh, the cluster is still being created. Yeah, uh, now it is created, now it is active. Now our cluster is created. So you can see this uh, huge rectangle. <laughs> this is our cluster, okay? So this is our cluster. So inside that cluster, we can uh, create our database. Uh, actually, we can create many databases in our, our cluster. So what we have done so far is we have created a we have logged into the uh, MongoDB. Then we have created an organization. Inside that organization, we have projects, and inside the project, we have uh, data. We have cluster. So inside that cluster, I'm going to create a database. We can create a database by uh, going uh, clicking on this button. Browse collections, and uh, I can uh, create a database by uh, clicking on this button. So guys, we can give a name for our database, right? So since we are creating a to do app, we just give to do DB. So what is this collection? So guys, um, you have worked with SQL databases, right? So you know what a table is. Uh, you can think since uh, that, that is SQL databases, right? This is no SQL database. So in no SQL databases, we do not have tables, but we have something called collections. Yeah, you can think it uh, is somewhat of a table, but I don't think it's a table. It's, it's not a table. It is, uh, you can just for now, you can think it is uh, somewhat of a table. Okay. But uh, once you get uh, hands on in this uh, noise field address, you will understand what is this collection and it, what is this all about. So you can think like this is somewhat of a table for now, this is somewhat of a table for now. So give, let's give it a name. Let's give to do. So, 
so why, why so the reason i added uh, the collection is this is like an initial collection it's like a oh, you can say initial table don't say it's, just, it's not a table don't say that uh, yes yeah, so we have created a table created, uh, created a database so this is our database inside that we have our uh, we have a created a collection we can create another uh, more collections if we want so ah yes so, and, uh, Yes, you are. Now it's time to go to the network access part. Right? Yeah, of course. So, guys, in your uh, left hand side, you can see this Nexus access uh, under security. If I go into that, so what I am what I am going to do here is uh, configure which IP address can access to your cluster. So, I am going to configure uh, IP addresses which can access to our cluster. Since our cluster is going to be online, uh, we so anyone can log into a cluster, right? So we have to prevent that. So we can configure a limit of uh, IP addresses. So those computers will be only will be able to uh, access to a cluster. So if I click on this one at current IP address, this is this is going to print my uh, my computer's IP address. Now if I go ahead and confirm this, only my computer will be able to. Uh, access to this cluster so no one else can access to my cluster but instead uh, if i uh, allow access from anywhere so any computers uh, from the in the world can access to my cluster so let's just go ahead and uh, do this for now because um, shivani i and uh, our front end team is going to work with this database so we can actually uh, give the ip addresses and uh, configure it also but uh, we just do this for now but I wish, I'm not uh, recommending you guys to do this because this is not secure because anyone can access your cluster, right? It's not obviously it's not secure, and uh, it's pending. So guys, what we have done so far is we have logged into the MongoDB. We have created an organization inside that organization. Let yes, so I'll show you. This is our organization. Right. So inside our organization, we have created this project to do a project right so inside that project we have one cluster right we have one cluster if you want you can create uh, another clusters and you can create multiple clusters but uh, i think you will have to you can have only one free cluster for a for a project i think i'm not sure about that uh, so inside the project we have a cluster so on the other cluster we have databases so yes so i think our, yeah, ah, yes, so, connect one. Yes, yeah, yeah right. So, I, I also wanted to ask, like, uh, if you if you have a project in the lo project locally, so we need to ca ca like connect with the MongoDB, right? So there, yeah, yeah. there should be some ways. So I just wanted to ask. Yeah. yeah. So guys, uh, so guys, if you have questions, you can ask. As well, I think uh, there's a uh, you can ask questions, right? Yeah, you can so, post your feedbacks, comments, also the questions you want to. Uh, like you want to post, you can use the comment area. So yeah. Yes, guys. So so uh, so we have set up our database. So set the database set up party. So so how we are going to connect our database to our application? So we have to do that, right? So you can see this is the, this connect button in in your databases. We have this connect button. So if I click on it, we have three options to connect. We can connect with MongoDB shell. We can connect with our application connect with it connect with uh, using mongodb compass so what we want to do right now is we want to connect this with the application right so i'm choosing this option and then uh, for the first step i had to uh, choose the driver since we are using spring boot as our framework obviously our yeah the driver will be java right so we are using java now. so we have to choose java and the version is uh, for going to do it later and uh, and guys you can see a string appear right so, uh, some, some, like a url or something so this string appears so this is called a connection string so guys we are going to connect our application using this string so we can copy it by clicking on this button so uh, actually guys you have many any other ways too you can connect your uh, database into application like if I click on this one, you can see a, a code appear, right? So what we have done here is 
we are creating a connection string object and uh, you can see we have a builder here so we, there are many other ways but we are not going to do this for now we are going to use this uh, connection string and uh, we are going to connect our application using this, using this connection string so guys yes, uh, yes, uh, yeah, so we are going to use this string inside our proje projects uh, like uh, we are going to insert this uh, string inside our project somewhere so then only we can co uh, connect with Mongo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Shivani, uh, our database part is uh, finished for now. We can move on to the Spring Yeah, now we can uh, move to the Spring Boot part. So today we are going with the Spring Boot framework. So Spring Boot is a uh, famous Java Spring framework. Uh, also, it's very popular and an open source and an enterprise level framework, right? So it's for creating standalone and a production grade application. So if you're using like a kind of IntelliJ like IDE, yeah. so you can use uh, those ideas to create your Spring Boot uh, project. Always, there's a common way to go to the browser. We can type uh, like a Spring Initializer and we can uh, initialize our project there. So let's go to Spring Initializer and uh, we can create a project inside that. So, yeah. You can it. go to this now, start dot, uh, spring .io. IO. Yeah. yeah. So there are so many subtopics like uh, project, language, Spring Boot, like that. So let's go one by one. So under project, there are two kinds of projects like Maven and Gradle. So there are there are so many benefits uh, inside both projects, both kind of projects. So today we are going to select Maven project because you can easily create your test reports. Also, it will configure your uh, dependencies very easily. So. Uh, yes, Shivani. So, guys, uh, so project metadata is uh, actually what the name <laughs> itself says. Uh, it's going to be a metadata. So, uh, as Shivani said, uh, so this what we are trying to do is we are going to generate a, a, a project uh, which are going to work with. So, we have to have package structure and stuff like that, right? So, we have to have a description and name. So, we can uh, configure them here. We can give a name like we are working with the to do app, so I just give to do app and uh, the description. Let's give to do application for Spring Boot. Let's just keep it as it is, and uh, we can give uh, we can uh, change it for package name, right? For example, to demo, we can change it, we can give like uh, MS Cloud um, and the yeah, fact we like to do something like that, yes. So, and guys, uh, packaging we are using jar. The Java one is kind of course we are not using that. We are using jar packaging and the Java version you can choose uh, any of this version. So, today we will use Java version 11. Uh, the 17th is uh, kind of new. So, for now, let's just use Java 11. And uh, Shivan, you can, yeah. So, under project metadata, I, uh, I saw something like uh, when we change group or artifact. The package name is also changing like that means the combination of group plus artifact is the package yeah, yeah like uh, so under dependencies so think what is a dependency think you are having a project you have this many code lines many code files right so each of your code lines and code files will depend on something some library that's what we call as a dependency think you are having uh, some database related coding so that the code part will be depend on uh, MongoDB related dependency. So if you click add dependency, you can select uh, most of the dependencies, right? So Shehan, let's uh, click uh, add dependency and show them how to select dependence. So if we type Mongo there, uh, yeah, three dependencies are appearing. We can select one of them and uh, the MongoDB related course will be depend on this dependency. You can, uh, there are so many benefits also in this layer, like these dependencies also a uh, lombok dependency is there are also a web dependency we can add uh, them also so under web dependency it will be useful to create restful web services right? so uh, under lombok uh, there will be uh, we can use so many annotations are there those kind of things are there so if we click uh, generate uh, button we can generate this initializer as a jar file so uh, after generating 
we can open it with an idea so there are so many ideas out there so today we are going to use IntelliJ especially so because uh, there are three editions also there is an ultimate edition uh, that uh, you can log in as a student and you can use uh, the paid uh, like paid services for free right uh, those kind of things are there so many things are there so search for them and use so today we are going to go with a uh, community so guys uh, we have been generating the initializer uh, yeah it is going to download it then it is uh, downloaded as a zip file we have to unzip it uh, so i unzip it already and uh, yes you are so we are going to use uh, intellij i'll show you where you can download it can go here and uh, you can click choose this uh, jetprince.com and you can download it from here and as you want to say uh, we can download the community version so we are not going to do that right now it's a it's a pretty easy step you can do it so yeah. yes you want to be it's open intelligent yeah so is yeah now we can open intelligent open up and uh, guys uh, so i have copied the path which i downloaded before if you can remember so i'm going to provide it here i'm going to open i'm not going to create new project i'm going to open the project because uh, our project is already initialized and generated with this string initial, right so i'm going to open that project with opening so guys this will be the user interface of the thing the only you can open your project like entering the path yeah. yeah, so this is the path, and I pasted it, and I'm clicking OK, and it will go. Yeah, I'm clustering this project, yeah. and it is loading now. Our project is loading, and uh, uh, so guys, this is take us a few minutes maybe because if you are doing this for the first time, it is uh, importing you know, projects, and it is down. It should it uh, it should download the dependencies and stuff like that. I think it's yes, Jan, is it uh, is it possible to uh, increase the font size? Ah yes, of course I will do that. Yeah. Uh, if I go, can I set the font size and settings? If I go to the uh, search function, yes, you can. Yeah, I mean, I think the code will be uh, quite kind of big. Yeah. So since it's uh, loading, uh, yeah. we can go to the project structure and see. Yeah, it's. Is it visible? Yeah, yeah, it's visible. Okay. 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 Uh, yes, guys. So we have downloaded our generated project and we have opened it now. So you, these uh, folders and stuff they came from the initializer itself okay so this is a maven project if you create any kind of maven project uh the basically these folders the source folder and these folders will be there because uh what we are doing is maven project if you use a gradle project uh, this is this will be different you will be working with maven projects in your mad modules as well so you will get used to it so guys we have this uh, source folder we inside the main folder inside that we have java where the code will be the source code and we have the resource folder and the test folder for unit testings and stuff like that and we have most importantly we have this form.xml so guys uh, every maven project is going to have this form.xml so uh, i'll uh, we are not going into d in this uh, Maven project, Maven projects, because uh, we do not have that a lot of time. <laughs> but I will uh, explain you guys what you guys uh, need to know when you are working with. So you can see there is a dependency tag here, right? So what is this dependency tag inside this form doc XML? So this dependency tag is uh, these are the dependencies we have chosen when we were generating uh, with Spring initializer, right? So we chose more data. And we chose uh, Spring Boot Web, and we chose Lombok, and uh, this is going to be the test one. Going to be uh, like a default one. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a default one for unit testings and uh, other testings. And the uh, guys, uh, if you want, you can add another dependencies from here as well. I'll show you how you can add it. So I'm going to go into the Google 
uh, I'm going to go into Google and I'm going to search like if you let's just say I want Lombok dependency I can type Lombok Maven repository so this is a Maven uh, project that is why I'm choosing Maven repository uh, Lombok Maven and uh, I can go into this Maven repository right I can click on it and I can choose a version of the Maven I mean the Lombok dependency I just to see uh, latest one and then you can copy this code sorry you can copy this code and then you can add it here inside the dependency so we already have Lombo so we do not need this so we can uh, delete ah before that guys when you are changing this bomb.xml you can see after changing this uh, button appear right so what this button will do is this is, go this is going to reload the uh, not the whole project is going to reload the pomodoro xml and it's going to reload the dependencies and those again because we just changed those things right so this ide needs to download the new newly added dependencies and uh, load them so that is why we should click on this button before running the application so i'm not going to remove this one we don't need it we already have it uh yes yeah, so normally when you uh, declare a dependency you need to declare inside dependency tags also there will be a group id artifact id uh, those kind of things uh, and the next thing is the java version of uh, yeah of us. yeah yes guys uh, so guys don't worry about uh, if you do not understand what this whole dependency thing is about you will understand why we uh, coding we will explain you what uh, these things intend to do and stuff like that okay so guys uh, one other thing i the more important thing you, you guys should uh, know is this java version so as you guys can remember we generated this application uh, with java 11 version right so guys uh, sometimes your application might work on your computer but uh, when it comes to your friend's computer it might not work so uh, one of the one of the reasons uh, that could happen is this java version so you might be using java version 17 your friend might be using java version 11 or some other than some other version so in such a case uh, you have to be aware of this thing so your friends and yours uh, uh, versions uh, be equal and guys we have this to do name we have uh, given and the description and uh, the version artifact and stuff like that and we have this uh, plugins here so guys uh so we can move on to the next step right shivan yeah so let's move to the test step uh like no to do application right main class yeah. the main class. yes yeah. uh guys In java yeah. yeah so so this is a main class so if you can see there's an annotation called spring boot application right so uh, since you guys know java so there is a part annotations so these annotations will be uh, useful in different kind of things here this spring boot application annotation will be useful to configure all the other classes and methods to this main class and inside this method you can see spring boot application dot run uh, inside that brackets to do application dot class like uh, that means this uh, this class will be uh, responsible to run our to do application so uh, the next part shehan will show how to create packages inside our uh, like um in a main in application right yeah yes guys so since you guys have already worked with ideas i think you guys know what a package is right so i'll show you how you can create a package uh, with uh, using intellij idea so you can you can uh, see like, click on a uh, folder where you want to create a package so I'm, i i'll just click on this one this is a folder and i want to create a package inside this so you can right click on it then you can create new if you want to create a class you can uh, choose class and other you have other files and other things so i right now i want to create a package so i'm choosing package and then i can give a name to the package so this is going to be this prefix is the uh, folder names of this one right so you have to keep it as it is uh, so let's just give to do because we are going to build an application inside this to do 
package so that's why I so created. now we have successfully created a package so uh, as you all are aware about mvc architecture here so we are going uh, with that kind of architecture like model service controller repository method so before creating those classes it's better to create uh, separate packages for those model controller oh, yeah. service and repository because you guys are working with uh, seven different people uh those uh, there will be so many entities so many uh, connections between them so you 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 may have uh, so many model classes controller classes right so it will be easy when you create different kind of packages inside your project and include the specific classes inside your packages and it will be easy to search or configure with other classes those kind of things so please go through there are so many documentations for uh, creating this project structures also also uh, so it's better to uh, yeah move with some project structure so now um, we have successfully uh, created four packages uh, there's a, there's a so small error yeah give me a second i guess yeah. uh, i think i have to refactor it you so, can rename uh, your packages yeah. by going to the refactor and rename by going refactor and rename it uh, you can rename your packages like uh, those kind of intellij kind of shortcuts uh, also it's better to know so uh, so inside model class yeah if we if we take uh, uh, model class uh, model think uh, yeah model package sorry uh, we are going to create a to do class so because uh, we are we are going to use to do entity so uh, think you uh, you have you guys are familiar with java so if you create a class for an entity you you need attributes you need getters and setters here also for to do we, are, we, we will be having three attributes a private uh, string id and a private uh, string description also a boolean attribute for status whether you are to do active or not yeah so we have created three attributes here yeah, uh, yeah let's mention private so there are different private protected public those kind of things so uh, now we are going to create getters and setters you can uh, easily go uh, go inside the class and right click and go to the generate button and uh, you can see when uh, you are constructed getters and setters if you create getters and setter button uh, you can easily select all the attributes you want and select ok to create getters and setters like that uh, you can again go and right click you can uh, create constructor, equal constructor, overloaded constructor as you as you wish. So, but think this is a very space consuming and very like uh, we have downloaded some dependencies uh, for some users, right? Uh, instead of using, like doing these things, we can use uh, those dependencies also. So uh, there's an annotation called getter annotation. So by putting that annotation uh, above your class, it will generate uh, uh, all the getters uh, for your entity. You need you no need to create. So there's an, uh, another annotation for setters. And another annotation for two string also if you want a default constructor called no ox constructor so also if you want to create a overloaded constructor also the answer so, it's running and uh, you guys guys uh if you could notice uh when i'm uh, adding this annotations uh it was imported from this line right? so we are importing it from Lombok, right? Yeah. So, guys, uh, these annotations are from the Lombok dependency. So, this is that dependency. Without the dependency, we cannot do that one, right? So, if we do not have this dependency, then we have to stick with the old way, the old school way of uh, creating these ones, right? So, yes, and another thing you can uh, see is we are getting an error. This no arc construct and all arc construct. So, this why we are getting an error is this all arc construct annotation is equal to this construct right and this all our construct annotation is equal to this one so if i delete this one then i will be see the error is gone i'm sorry this one the error is gone and uh, i don't know why we are not getting errors to these things uh, we should it's be getting because errors. the names which create the annotations may differ with the name we have uh, ah, yeah. so guys we can uh, get rid of these uh, getters and setters too why? Because we already have these annotations with the job for us. We don't 
Yeah, yeah it's, it, that's why we are using kind of a string boot uh, yeah, framework. Like, think uh, you can create a project with Java language. But here we are using Spring framework because to get this kind of benefits the, yeah. like that. Yeah, I hope you can understand. Uh, so now, Shahan, we are having an entity class. So uh, we are we have added all the annotations. So now it's better to go to the Mongo Atlas and uh, connect the string, right? Ah, I yes, guys. Uh, yeah. So guys, uh, I'll show you where you can connect your application, connect your database to this application, sir. Uh, guys, uh, in this source folder, if I actually expand it, we have this main folder. Inside that, we have this resource folder. So you can see this application to properties file. You can go into that and uh, you can add a line uh, before that i'm gonna have to go into our cluster uh, i think this is one yeah, yeah so guys so you can remember like i told that we are going to use that string somewhere inside our project right this is the place that application dot properties was the place yeah so i i have to type like uh spring data mongo you are right and I can uh, DT, yes. yeah, okay. and uh, we can paste the uh, that connection string in here. And guys, uh, you can see this is our user's username, right? So this is the connection string that I copied uh, from the, uh, the connect button. You can remember. So we this is our user's name. We have created the users, right? This is our user's name. Now we have to replace this parser with our parser. I gave one two three four. This is our user. This is our parser. And guys, uh, in here you can see uh, this is a uh, database name. This is uh, says it says uh, my first database. Now, if I leave it as it is and run on my run my application, this is going to create a new database name, uh, my first database, my first database in our class because I do not have such a database, right? So, but if I give the database that I have created before, it's to uh, DB. If I uh, give its name. Then uh, it's not going to create another database. It's going to connect to our created database. So guys, this one line is gonna going to do the connecting job for us. But if uh, there are many other ways too, you can uh, use uh, the .yaml file instead of this uh, .properties file, uh, or you can use uh, you can use the class, a configuration class, and uh, put that code I showed you before. You can uh, paste it here and. You can put configuration annotation on top of the class and you can do some kind of things like that you can uh, study these things but uh, since we do not have that much of time we don't going to do this we stick with this way yeah. yeah so now it's better to go again to our model class and uh, put the uh, related yeah, uh, annotations yeah. like uh, the primary key annotation and the document annotation especially uh -huh. So guys, uh, this to do class will be going to our thing if we are using a SQL database. So this to do class will be going to our table, right? It's going to be our table. So we do not have tables here. So this if you is use SQL, it will be a table. Yeah. Yeah. So since we have a no SQL, the MongoDB is a no SQL database. Since it is no SQL, we are going to have a collection, right? So we have to let this let our application know that this class is going to be our collection, right? So we have to give this annotation to do that task. We have to give document and uh, inside that we have to give collection and give the collection name. So we'll give you can give any the name if I will give to do. I saw this this thing is actually optional, you do not need this one. You can just leave it as document itself, or you can give it so you can uh, configure collection names yeah since we are having a to do uh, collection we know it to do but if we are going to create a new collection it's better to give the yeah uh, and guys uh, if this was a table we have primary keys right but uh, just like that we have one id in collections as well so we have to specify this uh, id so this is going to be the id right so this thing is going to be the id so that is going to be the id so we have to ID annotation on top of the other right? So, if you think uh, the description is going to be ID, then we have to uh, type ID on top of that, just like that. Yeah, so the so application now knows this is going to be ID, this is going to be our collection. So, the application knows that now. Uh, yeah, so we so, have. Yeah. 
Yeah, so now we are having a model class and also we have functional properties. Now it's better to go to the repository package and create a repository class. Yeah. So what is the repository? Yeah, basically it will be an uh, interface, basically. Yeah. To do repository. So in this repository, we will be uh, extending the Mongo repository. Mongo repository will be having so many inbuilt methods for MongoDB. Yeah, let's see what happens. So on and also it's better. To... Uh, guys, uh, so what is this uh, repository is all about? So guys, uh, we are connecting our application with our database, right? So we have to do some queries, like we have to like, do things with our database. We have to uh, get uh, details from the database. We have to save details in the database. So we have to do things like that, right? So this interface going to handle that part. So then guys, uh, if, uh, you have already worked with uh, several projects and you have typed queries, right? Like SQL queries inside your application as string values and execute uh, execute with them. And uh, you have so when when we to pick your database and application, right? So we, since we are using this Mongo, uh, we are using this Mongo data dependency. Yeah. Is, uh, we do not have to type those queries again and again and again. We have that uh, we that dependency is going to do the job for us, right? So we already have. Am I going to that one? So Shehan, uh, it's better to put the uh, like uh, the to the entity and uh, the primary key. Uh, ah data yes. Type yeah. Yes, guys. We have to specify uh, now this Mongo repository should know what is going to go, uh, what is going to be our collection. So we have to type to do classes names and the IDs data type, right? So Primary IDs. key, yeah. Yeah. Which data type also, is string? Also, since it's a repository class, it's better to put the repository annotation. Otherwise, the application will not know whether it's a repository or a controller or a service class. Like it will confuse. <laughs> Yeah. So, yes. so let's go so, to Mongo repository now. Yeah. yeah, so you guys can see the find all method, insert method, and uh, we have delete all method. There's, those will be probably going to be inside here or here. Uh, I cannot find those things right now. But anyway, we will have like uh, inbuilt methods to do the savings for in the database and find and uh, stuff like that. So we do not have to rewrite them again and again. So if we, if we leave our uh, repository like this, then that's enough for us. But if you really want, yeah. yes, you are. Yeah. So I have a question for Shahan. Like, uh, since uh, Mongo repository provide us all find or uh, save method and especially find by ID those methods. So if I want to find that description, th that method is not inside Mongo repository, right? So what what we can do for that? Uh, so insert, yes, you are. Uh, yes, you are. So if you guys want to create like. Yeah, like Shwana says, if you guys want to create, really create a query, then you can type this query annotation here. And the inside the bracket, uh, as a string value, you can type your queries, like in, in queries you want. Like, you yeah, know, this is not a SQL query, right? This uh, is yeah. special. So, so the queries you have worked with before is probably going to be different from this one, because this is a NoSQL database, so the query is going to be changed too, right? So, and uh, under this uh, query annotation, you can you can specify the uh, name of your method, public, which just saves uh, return type string, or just say type to find by um, description or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Description. Uh, and pass a string value if you want. Description and you don't have to implement that. Implement implement this method. This string. This Query is going to do that for you. You do not have to implement this one. So you can leave this method as it is, right? So this is how you, I haven't write the query yet, but yeah, you can find out the query and type it in your, by you, but we really do not need this. We already have the implement inbuilt method, so we just delete it. Yeah, we normally try to go with the Mongo repository inbuilt method, so it will be very easy for us. Yeah. Yeah. So guys, and uh, and yes, yeah, so we can move on to the next section. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we can uh, now move to the service package. So we can create some service classes by using this Bomber repository class. So here we are going to create a to do service class. So uh, since it's a service class, better to put the service annotation. So now think we have extended Mongo repository inside Mongo uh, repository. So there are some uh, methods, right? So those methods we can create the groups inside service class. So then we can access the data. So, uh, for that we need the uh, object of to do repository class we can't suddenly just create uh, so for that uh, you guys think uh, there are main classes in spring boot like main classes are reusable classes if you want to create an instance of a reusable a class uh, or a bean class inside another class we have uh, we are having an annotation called so if we use yeah, at auto wide annotation, then only uh, we can uh, easily create an object of to do uh, repository. Uh, uh, yeah, private. Yeah. an object. Without uh, putting this auto wide annotation, you can't create like this. You can't create object like in this way. But uh, there may be uh, different things like. Uh, new keyword and creating an object so those kind of things are like childish right let's go with some modern ways yeah so yeah. guys uh, probably basically this auto wide is going to do the job of creating uh, creating this uh, object for us we do not have to type new keyword and stuff like that what i said was you can create a object of to do repository with this annotation, you do not have to create a new keyword, and you can do not do not do not do those stuff. Um, so here we are going to create two methods. Like uh, we are going to get all the to dos, and also we are going try are going to try to save a to do. So there will be two methods. Those two methods will be public methods. So here we are going to retrieve a list of to do. Yeah, yeah. The, because the to do has three attributes, we can't just uh, retrieve. Uh, one to do like here uh, since we are going to retrieve most of the to do we are going to list also you can uh, import util list here also we need to yeah mention the to do entity so guys give me a second I'm not sure for my phone I'm going to score it I don't know I'm not I'm not going to score it name of find all to do something your your favorite name yeah uh, maybe there may, there may be some standards yeah when you go for industrial like level but here we are just creating find all to do inside going to return all the list of to do for that we are going to see a return keyword and uh, we are going to call the inbuilt method of mongo repository so we have created mongo repository. Yeah, repository dot yeah we can see some of this yeah uh, yes guys uh, so i'm what i'm what we are trying to do is we are uh, now this we have to do like we use image we don't have to create an object here it is already being cared of so we can return uh, this objects uh, method so we can see there are so many methods here right so but we did not create we did not implement those things so what what is this is uh, to do repository to do repository is this one we do not have anything inside that so these are the methods that are coming from uh, Mongo repository. Yeah. yeah, these are the methods I have always found. So we need to find all methods. Find all. So yeah, so guys, this method is going to return a list of what inside the database, what inside the uh, collection. So we have specified the uh, collection here. So to do collection, collection name and the data ID is type. So this is going to return what inside that collection. As a list, so if we have ten records, we actually we do not have four records. We have ten documents. If we have the ten documents, then all of those are going to return as a list of ten. That is why we are returning a list. Yes, we can. So the next method will be also a public method. Here we are going uh, going to post like uh, save. So here we are we are returning string. You can return integer or long or like. 
your your wish like so here also we have uh, mentioned a uh, public sorry uh, the name save to do and inside that we are passing a to do object because think when you are saving a to do you you need to save with the description or status right so it will be an object so that's what we are passing for there so uh, inside the method we are calling save method. Uh, we are passing the to do object here we are going to return a string value like the to do with id uh, since you are having a to do object see there you can use uh, like guys so you can see uh, we have this get id get description and uh, these methods right so we have this status and uh, we have the status as well if i find it so we have status and we have getters like this Right? Yeah, and so since uh, we, are, we need the to do ID, we are going to use uh, the get ID method with ID successfully saved. I think uh, you missed. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, guys, what we have done is uh, inside this method, we are passing our to do now. We are going to create a to do, right? We are going to, uh, like, we are going to, we can create a to do. And uh, it is passed as an object. So we are passing that object here, and then we are going to pass that object to our save method uh, in the purpose tree. And, and uh, we... Shehan, let's put like uh, to do with id uh, plus to do uh, dot get id successfully saved or something. So uh, it will be so like user interactive. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So after saving this, we are returning this string. So now guys, we are ready with the service class. Uh, as I have mentioned, service class is of a database. And uh, now we have a model class. So now uh, it's time to go with the browser. That means the controller class. Controllers are uh, the specific, the most important classes uh, to con uh, connect with the browser. Service classes are connecting with database. Uh, by connecting with the service classes, uh, service class methods the controllers will be connecting with the browser and it will give us the data we want so since it's a controller it's uh, we have mentioned the rest control annotation because it's the main class uh, which controls all the restful uh, web services so here yeah. also we are going to yeah use the service class method so we need a service class object so we are going to and uh, going to the to do service yeah, class and uh, it will be a private object. So here we are going to create two methods for uh, retrieve all the to do and save it. Yeah. Uh, and guys, uh, do not be confused by this. If you do not understand what to do means, that is, you can read about it and understand. But uh, just think. Uh, if we want to we want a service object created inside this to do controller, we can do something like this. Like we can uh, type like to do service and uh, just give a voice and uh, new uh, to do service. So then we can use the to do methods like s dot, and we can use this. Uh, no, we actually to provide. So we can uh, use we can create a service class service object like this, right? So this is somewhat like this, but it's not the same. Remember that. Don't uh, think this is the same. It is somewhat like this, but uh, this is what we are doing. It's not the same. Yeah. So we can create controller methods. That's your yeah. Yeah. The first method will be for retrieving all the. Uh, yeah, public method. So retrieving all the list of uh, to dos. So here also we are going to return a list of to dos. So uh, I think you guys can see that uh, the Java util list uh, folder. So here also we can mention a method name get all to do So find all. Yeah, yeah. Inside we are not passing any parameters. Here also we are going to return a list of to do by calling the service object. We have called repository object into the service class, and now we are calling all the service method Hi. inside the controller class. Yeah. So that's uh, this method is coming from 
service class. Service class. So this is that method, right? So this is that method. Okay. Okay. Sure. You can continue. So uh, there is a important thing for the each methods because uh, since it's a controller, we need to map. Right, we need to map these methods. So uh, you guys may know there are so many HTTP requests. If you want to get something, you can uh, use get HTTP request. If you want to save, you can use post HTTP request. Or uh, if you want to delete, you can use delete HTTP request. So these methods are responsible for those restful web services, right? That's why we are putting rest control annotations. Mm. So now we are we uh, we are inside the controller and we have created get all to do's method but uh, but there is an annotation for uh, the request. So since we are going to get all to do's, we need to uh, use get request uh, mapping. So there is an annotation for get map uh, yeah get request yeah. So inside that we can include a path. Uh, like uh, get or something, yeah. This will be the path for that. So, Shehan, can you explain that? Yeah. Uh, yes, Shivani. So, uh, 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 am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what Shivani said was, uh, since this is a, this is going to be a HTTP request, right, guys? So, we have several kind of HTTP request: get request, post request. And delete request and uh, put request. So this is going to be a get request. So we have to put that annotation on top of that method so that uh, it, it, it knows that method is going to be a get request, right? So but that is why we are putting get request. And we have to put a path like get. We do not need to put uh, get. We can leave it as it is. So we can do whatever you want, like cat or anything. Uh, but for the simplicity, uh, not for the simplicity, for the demonstration. Uh, let's just use get here, but do not put uh, like get when you are when you are working with your project because uh, we do not practically do this. Uh, but uh, we'll do this for now, and uh, and then after then after that uh, we are going to create a post post request, right? So we can give the annotation as post, and then we can give a, a path like. Yeah, as I have mentioned, if you want to save a to do, uh, you want to use post HTTP uh, request. So uh, using uh, uh, post mapping, and here we are going to create a public method uh, which is returning a string value, and uh, we are going to give a method name as uh, save all to do or save, um, yeah, save all to do. So inside that, we are going to uh, pass a to do object as a parameter yeah because uh, as i have mentioned you guys are uh, you guys are going to save as an object right so here we are going to use the save to do method of service class and inside that we are going to pass the to do object yeah uh yes guys and one other thing is uh we uh, now guys uh, as i mentioned before this is going to be a http request right so in, in the http request you know we have headers we have a request body we have stuff like that right so so basically we are passing this to do object as our request body so we have to specify that so we can uh, put this annotation uh, request body annotation so now this method knows this is going to be our this is going to be from the request body this object can be fine in the request body so we have to put this annotation otherwise it won't work because this request doesn't know where this to do is coming from right so we will show you about these things don't uh, worry if you do not understand this we are, we are going to work with the post uh, we are going to test these things and we will understand yes so shivani i think uh, everything is Oh, okay. Right. Uh, no, there is another thing, right? Uh, we need to create uh, put the cross origin annotation. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes, guys. We have to put the cross origin. So, what is this cross? Uh, we have to put cross origin here. So, guys, uh, think. Uh, Shivani, shall we explain this after we test with the uh, testing tool? So it yeah. Also, we just uh, it's better to create like a hello world method, which is uh, returning a string value because uh, we need to say that uh, controllers are responsible to connect with the browser, but uh, we, we no need to uh, in, 
depend on the service class methods, right? So uh, here we are just uh, going to create a hello world method, which is going to return a string value, which is uh, like hello world. So the path will be yeah test with get mapping request. So inside that, yeah. So I think uh, we'll do the course one after the test so they can understand yeah. why we are putting it. Yeah. yeah. So guys, now we can, uh, now everything is okay. This course thing is actually, we do not, we can really let's run it later. So everything other, other than that, everything is okay. Now we can run our project and see if it is working. Uh, so let's go to our main uh, uh, method, main uh, class, and then we can, uh, I hit, uh, click on this uh, triangle, green color uh, triangle. So then we can run our application. So guys, now cross your fingers and hope if it's working, we do not get any errors. Uh, so now it's starting. Uh, yeah. So yes, guys. So it is okay. We do not have any errors or anything. Uh, so guys. Uh, now this application is running on port 8080 in localhost. The, you can see there are other messages as well. We, the, the MongoDB connection is open, which means Mongo, I think MongoDB is connected successfully also. Yes. So guys, in the controller, uh, in the controller, uh, Shivani, why don't you explain it? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so in the browser, we are going to retrieve the string value. So, like this, it's not depending on the service class. So, uh, the URL uh, uh, with, uh, will be like uh, HTTP localhost or port number 8080, and the path will be slash test because uh, the path will be will be go to the end, right? So, uh, yeah, HTTP localhost 8080. If we type uh, test and give enter. Yeah, it will show. It should show the hello world because uh, we have uh, yeah configured the class like that. So uh, now uh, it's time to check uh, the other methods also. But think uh, you can't go to the browser and use that uh, single line and you can't pass an object with description and status and also that to test that we are going to use a testing tool. Yeah, Postman. So. Ah, uh, yeah. The another thing is, uh, uh, yeah. If it, uh, since, uh, yeah, let's go to the intelligence show. Like, uh, yeah. If we, if you see the get all to do's method, the path is uh, slash get. If we go to the browser and uh, put the slash get, we will not get any results. See, there an empty array is uh, there because uh, initially we are not having any to do uh, details. So now uh, it's time to go to the postman and uh, test whether methods are working properly. So as you have. Uh, I think you guys may have seen the session one. So we have done a session uh, for Postman also. So this is a testing tool. There are so many testing tools out there. Uh, here we are going to use this testing tool. We can create a separate collection for ITP and we can create so many request pages. So here we are going to, we can enter the URL also there. We can select so many HTTP requests like get or post or put or delete those kind of things there. So, Shehan, can you show that, uh, click and show that there are so many HTTP requests are there. Yeah, you can see like post, put, delete, all the request methods are there. So, now uh, we are going to write the URL as the browser. So, let's test whether it's working as a browser. We have mentioned the localhost 888 test and we sent the request. Yeah, it's also giving the same thing, hello world. So, we can assume that it's working as a browser. Uh, so here, uh, now it's time to create a to-do. Let's try to create a to-do. So so that we need to use post HTTP uh, request and uh, we need to give a body, an object for that. So we need to go to body and uh, uh, and and click, yeah. Uh, yes, guys, and uh, one thing I want to, <laughs> I want to make it sure. Uh, guys, we are choosing body to type uh yeah, so we have choosing we can uh, 
this is going to be a HTTP request. We can give authorization, we can give headers and stuff like that. So we are going to give it as a body and we are going to choose JSON and it is already chosen. We can give the JSON. So our now we are giving a new to do object here. Okay, so we can give the description. Now this is going to be a uh, JSON, JSON uh, type of object. We can give a description and uh, let's just type text description comma and in the other line we can give a status and we can give a boolean value true or false let's just give false now initially it should be false right so when you are creating a to do it should be the status should be false then only yeah so and sure we are not putting id right yeah, so because uh, the ID is auto-generated when we are using MongoDB, uh, it will be a string value also. Uh, let's see what will be the ID also when we send the post request. Uh, yes, Shivani, uh, before that, uh, guys, uh, let me, I'm telling the same thing again and again. I want to make sure that you understand everything. Uh, so guys, so so what we are going to do is, we are going to try out this method, the post request one. So right, I mentioned before, we are putting it as a request body, right? we put this annotation and we are passing an to do object and inside the to do class we have id description status attributes so these are those right these are the names yeah. these are the values we are not putting id because it is going to be a general and we are going to put as a the body the request a request body okay so yes you can hit next. yeah so uh, if we send the request uh, we should receive a string uh, yeah string value so to do with id that id that's that's the id for our to do just create so so let's see whether the to do is existing by uh, getting finding all to do's yeah oh yes yeah, that, so the HTTP request should be changed as uh, get also we no need a body yeah is sent yeah it's it doesn't get yeah like guys if you uh, see here uh like uh now uh, you, yeah. if refresh this we should be getting that uh, to do now yeah yes we are getting this is a response yeah this so one. so if if you are using sql you think uh, there will be a table there will be columns there will be rows but here we are getting in some different type like uh, json type right so that's why we are we are calling it as a document that's why we have put that annotation docu as document that's why we are calling it as a collection not a table yeah and uh, i just go check with the database also if i browse collections it should be there in our collection as a document this is our collection to database to do yes we have this now if i delete it from the database itself then uh, i shouldn't be if i refresh this again then i won't be getting it yes it it's an empty empty. Yeah. yeah yeah and uh yeah pause we skip that pause, yeah we, we can't skip it's very uh, important so guys think now uh, don't think uh, since this even though this has a url this this url is not going to be used by the users like this is the backend right so this is the backend so this url is going to be uh, used by the front end developers uh, to use this to call the apis right uh, so we so think now this is going to be this is locally hosted but this is going to be host in the cloud so do that so think if someone has the backend url to, the, to those apis uh, then everyone anyone can do anything right i mean they can add details and stuff do stuff like that so and uh, i mean any application any front end application uh, do the do use this one but we have to stop it we have to specify only this uh, front end application should be able to use our back end api so we have to specify that so that's where this uh, course rules and uh, course coming from so we can uh, in our controller as shivani mentioned this controller is going to be facing the browser right so these methods are going to be facing the browser these are the http requests so we can put this annotation here proc searching and then inside that we can specify uh, the url of the uh, front end so it will know that this only that uh, front that, that url will be able to access this api so so there are some theoretical parts like a pre like 
free fight request and uh, there are so many other things but uh, we are yes, not expecting so what we are going to do is like uh, think now we are implementing the back end part and we are having a uh, like http local host port 8080 that url so if if they are going to front end they will be having a different url with different port number maybe http local host 3000 so uh, we need to connect uh, the back end with front end right that's what we are doing here so yeah so for now let's just put this asterisk this asterisk means uh so if i put this asterisk then any of the application actually can have a, uh, can use our uh, application the back end the API. port number they can use yeah yeah they can use so this is not secure but let's yes. just use this one because we do not want to go into the detail and do every configuration uh because we do not have that much of time but uh guys i'll show you where you can learn about this uh, course because it's really, really important if i type course talk or something you can do just google this like this and this developer and mozilla organization this is the organization this is the documentation you can read about this you can read about this uh how it's working you can see this get request and stuff like that you can read about these things and guys uh if you like i'm recommend I, i'm telling you guys to read this and understand it but if it is uh, hard to understand i know that sometimes uh, documentations are hard to understand so in such a case you can prefer youtube videos and there are so many other resources you can watch those things also so shivani uh, so that's for our part uh, the part one backend with uh, spring boot and mongodb so i uh, the next part will be like uh, very important uh, and uh, they will be connecting this backend application uh, with front end using angular Mayura uh, and shivani. yeah uh, before that, guys, uh, so we only implemented two methods, right? Uh, get and uh, post run. So we have implemented the put request and the delete request and those methods as well, but we do not, we did not need those things. Uh, if you, if you want the source code, I will provide you. So, um, so we have a MS Club organization here. So this is our dev team. And if I go to the MS Club organization under the repositories, we have uh, uploaded, we have we have our application in ITP guide 3.0 backend. This is our repository, right? In this repository, uh, in source folder, uh, I'm not going into the details, but you can uh, clone this uh, repository and you can uh, read this or read this. I mean, you can study the source code and understand how we do do the, the uh, delete methods and Put request, right? Put request and delete request. So, guys, uh, you can find it in the MS Club uh, organization in GitHub. I will provide you the uh, URL link as well. So, guys, uh, if you can see, we have several other repositories as well. So, with these other repositories we are working on, we have this uh, MS Club admin panel. So, this is the project we are working on currently. We are, uh, so, there are so many other projects we are doing. So if you guys are interested, you can join the MS Club and you guys can contribute uh, like that. Um, so yeah, so we, Shivani, we can hand over the session to the front end. Yeah, so thank you all. Thank you very much for your patience. Gahana, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shihan, I and Shivani Aki for that insightful presentation about backend and Spring Boot. We all learned a lot from your session. Once again, thank you so much.